have your Bibles this morning, uh, if you do, Acts chapter 18, Acts 18, take a little break if you will from Hebrews and we're going to find our way into Acts chapter 18 this morning and we're going to look at two people, I titled them the dynamic duo, the dynamic duo. We've all heard of Bert and Ernie, Batman and Robin, me, Bo and Luke Duke, but we're going to look at a biblical dynamic duo this morning, Aquila and Priscilla. Don't really get much on this, this married couple, but we do know this. Wow. If you ever looked into their lives, what little we get in Scripture, what little's penned down about them, there's a lot that comes from them. They laid down such an influence to a lot of people around them. You see that in Scripture. Especially one, the Apostle Paul that fell in love with this couple. They were a mighty couple for the cause of Christ. They show what happens when, when a husband and wife couple get together and, they, and they're unified in one cause, which is to please, which is to do the will of Christ. It's exactly what this couple does, Aquila and Priscilla. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. Then Paul leaves Athens and he goes to Corinth. There he becomes acquainted with a Jew named Aquila. Born in Pontus who had recently arrived from Italy with his wife Priscilla. They left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all Jews from Rome. Paul lived and worked with them, for they were tent makers, or two, leather, they worked in leather, just as he was, or just as he did. So we know according to Scripture in Acts chapter 18, that these two, they flee from persecution of the Jews. Caesar has laid down much persecution. We, we know Aquila was a Jew. We don't. There's not much mention, not anything mentioned of Priscilla. But they leave in, in fear or from persecution of the Jewish people. They leave from Rome. Now they could have left one or two ways. They could have left being disheartened, could they not? They could have left in a sense of this. Now what do we do with our lives? What are we going to do? We've been, we've been persecuted. We've been run out of our land. We've been run out of our homeland, if you will. And They could have left with a, with a mentality of, woe is me. They could have left with a mentality of, why me, Lord? Why me, God? Why us? I mean, everything was good for us. We were pretty comfortable. But now we're sort of run out of our land, run out of our home. They could have left that way, which a lot of believers, no doubt, probably did. Upset that they've been uprooted. Upset that they've been taken from their land. But you don't see that. You don't pick that up nowhere in Acts chapter 18. There's a passage of scripture in Psalm chapter 43 verse 4. I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. When I am discouraged, why is my heart why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will learn to put my hope in God. I will praise Him again. My Savior, my God. I will learn to put my trust in Him. I will learn to put my hope in Him. 
even when things are not going to according to His plan in our lives, we must learn to put our hope and trust in our God, our Lord. No doubt this was not Aquila and Priscilla's plan to be run out of town. But this was the plan of who? The Lord God. To move them from one piece of land to another. To sovereignly place them in the, pa in the path of probably the greatest evangelist that the world has ever seen, has ever witnessed, in that of Paul, the apostle. He becomes acquainted with Aquila. He becomes acquainted with Priscilla. They weren't disheartened. They stayed faithful to Christ. They leave Italy. They leave Rome. They meet up with Paul. And Paul works with them. They are now literal tent makers together, working in leather with one another. Not just tents or not just leather making for to live in, but no doubt they could have worked together in, in the tent making and the leather making for the boats and the ships that, that crossed the waters that, that needed that fixed, that needed those sails fixed for, for transportation and and, they, and they're so faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and their service for Him that they leave an impression in Paul's life. They leave such an impression, this dynamic couple, they leave such an impression in Paul's life that Paul we see as we move down in Scripture that he longs to take them with him in service for Christ. And a question of, for us is this. In the world in which you live, the little area in which you live, and where you live, what kind of impression do you leave? In your neighborhood, what kind of impression do you leave? In your work environment. Are you known as one who is faithful to Christ? Are you known as one who, who, who yes, you become disheartened, but, but you know where to turn. You know where to go. As Aquila and Priscilla did. You know where to go. You know to go to the one and only, the true God. And when you become disheartened... You know where your faith stands. You know where your faith rests. That it rests in not self, but that it rests in Christ and Christ alone. Could that be said of you? Well, that was said about Aquila and Priscilla. And interesting that a lot of times, well, not a lot, but what few we do hear of Aquila and Priscilla, a few times what? Priscilla's name is mentioned first. Which speaks volumes. And the translations of Scripture speak, speaks volumes of this day and time to place her first. She was such a mighty, and a side note of Priscilla, she was such a mighty, a mighty follower of Christ. To have her name mentioned before her husband was a big deal. But you read that in different times throughout Scripture. There she is. Mentioned first. Did they have kids? I don't know. We can speculate all we want. But there's no mention of that. There's no mention of children. But we do know this. Whether they had children or they didn't have children. One thing's for sure. They were sold out as a husband and wife couple for Christ. When Priscilla was moving, Aquila was moving with her. When Aquila was moving, Priscilla was moving with him. 
It's as if when Aquila prayed, he would be praying for Priscilla. And when Priscilla prayed, she would be praying for Aquila. That's a rare deal today, is it not? It's a rare deal. I lost a good friend of mine just a couple weeks ago, and not even a couple weeks ago, and, and one of the things that was said at his celebration of life ceremony by the pastor was this. He said, every time I seen Lynn, I seen Dave. And every time I seen Dave, I seen Lynn. They were a united couple for the cause of Christ. Same here. Priscilla and Aquila would leave such an impression on Paul's life that Paul would, would ask them and say, listen, come along. Come along with me. For the cause of Christ. Turn that. Just move on down there in Acts chapter 18, verse 18. The impression they leave on Price, on, on Paul is priceless. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that in verse 18 of Acts 18. Then he says goodbye to the brothers and sisters. He shaves his head according to the Jewish custom, marking the end of a vow. Then he sets sail to Syria. Does he go by himself? No, he does not. Who does he take with him? He takes Priscilla and Aquila along with him. He takes them with him. He takes them with him in the cause of Christ. For the glory of Christ. He sees this in them. He sees the fact that, that they don't recognize their life as their own. But he sees the, this fact in them, this spiritual fact in them, that they recognize their life as service for Christ. See, there's a difference, isn't there? There's a lot of believers that live their lives each and every day. But there's far less believers that live their life or live their lives in recognition of the fact that, yeah, it's their life, but they live it in service for Christ. Or they at least try to. They at least try to keep that foremost in their minds. That their life is not about themselves. They at least try to keep in their minds that this life is not about me, but it's about the glory of Christ. It's about the service of Christ. And that's what you see with Priscilla and Aquila. And let me tell you something. No doubt it had to have been in their lives. Because you've seen in the past when Paul would at times become upset with others who were serving with him who didn't live life that way. And he would basically, as he said to Mark in the past, right? And Mark would act 13. He said, just leave him behind. I have no time for that. Until Mark matured and, and understood that his life must be sold out for the cause of Christ. There's a little passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And it, in chapter 6, from verse, verse 12 on down in 1 Corinthians, it's talking a lot about sexual sin, but... He makes, a, he makes a statement in verse 19 and 20 of 1 Corinthians. Listen to what Paul says. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for you are bought with a high price. So honor God with your body. I know he's talking about there the, the fact of sexual sin and remaining pure and all that. But he, he says that statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, when he says that you've been bought with the price, your body's not your own, you should be in service for Christ, it should be all be about the glory of who? Christ. It should all be about His glory. 
Jeremiah gets on gets on with it too in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 in the Old Testament he even references in chapter 10 the book of Jeremiah verse 23 that his life was not his own he makes mention before I was formed it was never my own it's always been it's always been set apart for the glory of my God, my Lord. Paul sees that in Priscilla and he sees that in Aquila that their lives are now set apart for the glory of Christ. And for my question to you and question to myself this morning is this. Are our lives set apart Apart for the glory of Christ? Is your life set apart for the glory of Christ? If you're married here this morning, is it set apart for the glory of Christ? Is it about Him? Could you be accused of a power couple for the glory of Christ? Or could you be accused of a, a powerful individual for the glory of Christ? See, that's the question. That's the question. Priscilla and Aquila were just that. Somebody that Paul seen as, as very important to the ministry. Very influential. Somebody that could... Somebody that could be used and, and can be benefited well in the ministry. When somebody seeks to serve Christ, do, do they think to themselves, wow, I would love to have you with me for the cause of Christ? Or do they look at you as maybe, eh, maybe you're just going to be heavy weight to pull around? Those of you who serve the Lord Jesus who served the Lord Jesus for any amount of time, know what I mean when there's those believers that are, that are very valuable for the service for, of Christ, and there's those believers that they're just nothing but heavy weight. And you just wish you would be able just to cut the rope or, or cut the chain and just, just let them sit back because you just feel like you're dragging them. But that wasn't with Priscilla and Aquila. There's a woman and a man who loved the Lord so much that played such an integral part in the ministry that Paul had the service for Christ. Something very interesting happens as you move down in Acts chapter 18 speaking of Priscilla and Aquila. In verse 24, there's a Jew named Apollos. He was an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well. He arrives in Ephesus from Alexandria in Egypt. He knows the scriptures well. He's been taught the way of the Lord. He taught others about Jesus with an enthusiastic spirit. With accuracy. But he knew only about John's baptism. He knew only about that John prepares the way. He didn't know it in its complete form. That Jesus was the way. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained the way of God even more accurately. They explained to him all there was to know about Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. His life, His death, His resurrection. They took him aside and they took him aside lovingly. 
explain the truth even more. There's a lesson here to be learned from Priscilla and Aquila, and one of the lessons is this. They did not approach Apollos with some arrogant, high esteem mind within themselves. But they approach him lovingly. They approach him lovingly. Longing to see him understand the scriptures more. They see the drive in him. They see the love of the Lord in him. So they pull him aside and they approach him with a, with a care, with a love for another believer. They approach him that way. You know, sometimes how we put out God's word has huge ramifications on how it is received. It just does. Sometimes believers can approach other believers in such a way and, and if they're not careful, it comes out arrogant. Condescending. But here with Priscilla and Aquila, they, they do it so lovingly as you can see and they take him aside and they explain the way of God in such a way and to where it not only benefits themselves, but it benefits Apollos and the service for Christ. So another thing about Priscilla and Aquila was this, is they love to teach the Word of God. They love to see men and women of faith grow deeper in their understanding of Scripture. They love that. Nowhere do we see in their lives where they wanted to be elevated. They wanted to be the one behind the pulpit or whatever. And Nowhere do you see that. They were very hospitable people. You'll see that in Scripture as, as we move on. They learned from Paul and no doubt Paul learned from them. They learned the fact that, that they were not a one woman or one man show. They learned the fact that this was not about themselves, but like I said before, but this was about Christ. This was all about Him and, and this had nothing to do with them really. They were willing at any moment you can see in Scripture to take the back seat. To take the back seat and and let Paul take the reins and the directing of the ministry for Christ. My advice to you is if in your service for Christ is this. Be humble. Be humble. Be humble like these two, this husband and wife team. Be humble like Paul. All three were willing to take the back seat. They didn't have to sit up front. They could care less. As long as who was getting the glory. As long as Christ was getting the glory. That's all that mattered. Paul in Romans chapter 16 in his letter. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. My co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. Give my greetings to them. In his letter to the Romans, give my thanks to them. They were my co-workers for Christ. They served faithfully beside me. They never walked away from me. They served faithfully with me. In fact, listen to this. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I'm thankful to them. Not only I am thankful, but all of the Gentile churches are thankful to them. They were willing, they risked their lives for me.
as one writer said, they willingly laid their neck beneath the sword, if you will, to see that the ministry that Paul was doing for the cause of Christ continued on. They willingly did that. Ask yourself this. Are you willing to risk your life for a brother and sister in Christ? Are you willing to give it up for them? Priscilla and Aquila were to the fact, to the point that even Paul makes mention of it. Somewhere in their ministry with Paul, somewhere in their service for Christ with Paul, somewhere along the line, there come a point in their service for Christ with Paul, somewhere along the line, they were confronted with the fact that they might lose their life. Does it say that they run and hide and hid? No. Paul says they once risked their lives for me. Christ in John chapter 15 verse 13 said what? No greater love. No greater love than when one lays down his life for another. But why did Christ say that? He was speaking of the cross. As he was talking to his disciples, he was speaking of the cross. In other words, there is no greater love than in what I'm about to do as I lay down my life for you. No greater love it is that we can learn from Christ than if called upon to lay down our lives for one another for the cause of Christ. I'm thankful to them, Paul says. They once risked their lives for me. And so are all the Gentile churches. See, it just wasn't, listen, it just wasn't Paul. They, they, they didn't gravitate to Paul in the sense of, well, I'm just going wherever Paul goes. You ever meet those believers? They only follow a certain ministry. They only go a certain direction. They only follow a certain person. All they ever talk about is a certain preacher. And it never goes beyond that. Every time they speak, they say, well, so-and-so said this, so-and-so that, said that. It kind of gets nauseating after a while. Here, Priscilla and Aquila, they did much for the Gentile churches in their hospitality. Give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. See, when you hear about Christian hospitality, it's, it's about this when it comes to Scripture. They swung their doors open for the believers as they would come into town and they would need places to rest. They would need food to eat. They would need food to be prepared as they would go from one town to the next for the glory of Christ. Priscilla and Aquila were always willing to swing their doors open. Always hospitable to the believers, to Christ's church. Always willing to be there. To such an extreme that Paul even mentions what? He even mentions their hospitality. Their love for the church. Their love, not for their church, but their love for for Christ's church. He said, give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. I mean, everywhere, everywhere they moved, it seems like they would, they, they, would, they would plant themselves a church in their home. Even when they found their way going back to Rome, eventually in their lives, what happens? Priscilla and Aquila, once again. Once again. 
have a church meet in their home. Very hospitable people. They understood, and you'll see in Scripture, 1 Corinthians really quick, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is very important for us to understand and learn. And You've heard it before, but it's, 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 it's super important. I want you to get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's pretty much the whole chapter. Most of the chapter is talking about spiritual gifts, okay? Pick up a verse. I'm just going to skip around. We'll pick up verse 12. The human body has many parts, but many parts make up one whole body. Some of us are Jews. I'll just kind of jump down through here. Some of us are Jews. Some of us are Gentiles, slaves, free. All been baptized into one spirit. All share in the same spirit. The body has different parts, many different parts. I'm not a part of the body become I'm not, not a hand. That does not make it any less part of the body. The ear says I'm not part of the body because I, I'm not an eye. Would that make it any less part of the body? What's Paul saying? Paul's saying this in his letter to the Corinthians. As he moves down with spiritual gifts from verse 1 on down in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He's saying, listen. Every part of the body has an integral part to how the body operates, humanly speaking, right? The eye can want to pick something up. The eye can look at something and the brain can tell the eye, okay, that's what needs to be picked up. And the eye and brain, or the brain can desire that all at once, but unless it has the hands to reach down and to do that, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Paul's saying this. We work together as one unit, as one cohesive body for the cause of Christ. We work together for Christ. Together as one. One does not outdo the other. One does not supersede the other. My gift is not your gift. Your gift is not my gift. One gift is not greater than the other. Gifts are used in different ways, different forms, different directions. But it's all for what? It's all for the glory of Christ. Christ in His sovereignty, the Lord God in His sovereignty, uproots Priscilla and Aquila, uproots them in persecution against the Jews, brings them down from Rome, miraculously, sovereignly places them in the path of a man called Paul, and, and places them there to where they show such hospitality, such service to the Most High God, so useful to Paul. Where Paul says, oh no, you're going to be used with me. I'm going to be used with you for the glory of Christ. Not just here, but other places throughout the land. For His glory, for His honor. Like I said before, not just did Paul teach them, but they taught Paul. See, a lot of times, if you're not careful, you'll elevate somebody like Paul up so high. People do from time to time. They'll, they'll speak of Paul and they elevate the man so high. But remember, he was just a mere man. He wasn't Christ. Priscilla and Aquila were just mere people. A woman and a man. They were not Christ. But they were used in such a way for the glory of Christ, for Him, for Him alone. We need to learn to learn from people like Priscilla and Aquila. Those that willingly, those that willingly, if called upon, would open their doors to others. Those that were, would willingly have called upon, yeah, they might have had plans, but would say, okay, if, if another brother or sister needs me today, that's what I need to do. I need to go mentor to them. I need to be with them. I need to help them. They're in need, whatever it may be, I need to be there for them. 
Wow, did they leave an impression. Turn to 2 Timothy really quick. 2 Timothy chapter 4. See, how deep did the impression go? Was the, did, was, was the impression that they left on Paul, was it one that was just kind of there for a certain amount of time and then it kind of just faded out after, after a few years or a few months? Or was it a lifetime? Paul in 2 Timothy is given his final greetings. He's given his final words. He's about to speak no more. He knows the end is near. He gets that. You read it throughout Scripture. Listen to what he picks up in verse 9. Have, have anybody to mention? You know for a fact he's met so many faithful people for the cause of Christ. Not to belittle them by any means, but of anybody to mention. Who does he mention in verse 19? Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. Give my greetings to them. Give my greetings. In other words, give my thanks. In his letter to Timothy, Timothy, give my thanks to Priscilla for all she done. For the cause of Christ. Timothy, give my thanks to her husband Aquila for all he done for the cause of Christ. Give my thanks to them. I'm thankful. They did so much. They did so much for Christ. The least I can do, he's saying in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19. For the least I can do is give my thanks for their service for Christ. Like I said at the beginning, this is not just some random by chance meeting that Aquila and Priscilla just so happened to meet Paul. But this was placed in motion before time began. That they would meet together for the cause of Christ for one purpose. The furthering of the gospel Right at the beginning, the first century churches. Right at the beginning. And one of the key catalysts to pull this off was persecution. Was persecution. Was upheaval. Was a disruption in two people's lives. When something happens in your life, whether you look at it as an upheaval, maybe persecution, a disruption, slow down a second and think to yourself, is it that? Or is there a greater purpose in it? Priscilla and Aquila, no doubt, Come to the point in their lives where they've seen all that they went through by Aquila being a Jew, being moved from that land in the, in, in the path of Paul, and to do so much remark, so many remarkable things for the cause of Christ. They had to have looked back and said, Wow. Wow. We get it now. We get it now. 
And they would go first full circle to find their way right back to where they started. With who? Paul. Paul. So take what the Lord Jesus sends your way. Take it. There's a reason behind it. If you're not married, be a mighty soldier of Christ. If you're married, be a mighty team. Be a mighty team. I'll close with this. I know from time to time I bump into a husband and wife. Husband and wife, if you will. They're both saved, but one's a servant of Christ and the other is just there. And it's sad. Because it doesn't take long before I'm talking to the one and he or she is eventually talking of the sadness that they have because the spouse is not on fire, if you will, or not in service, if you will, as much as the other spouse is. And it seems like it's a great hindrance. Just talked to a gentleman about that a few months ago and a friend of mine and he serves the Lord with vigor. Not so much his wife. It's tough. But we don't see that here with Priscilla and Aquila. We see a woman and a man who served faithfully together. I'm sure up to the very end. May we do that. May we be hospitable. May we be willing to serve where we're called to serve. May we do it lovingly like they were with Apollos. May we do it not for self, but for the love of Jesus Christ, the ruler of the world and the God of our salvation. Let's pray. For Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for this time this morning as we come in and looked upon your word. And with Priscilla and Aquila, Lord, a faithful wife and a faithful husband who longed to serve you and serve you well. And they did just that. May we, Lord, may we serve you in the same way as married couples, as singles, as a church. May we serve you well. Go before us this day. Go before us this week. As we go out into this world, as we've seen in Sunday school class this morning in John 15, in a world that hates us because of who we stand for. May we not shy back, but we, may we stand in the face of evil for your glory and for your honor. May we be an Aquila or Priscilla for your glory, for your honor. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.